sent us a mercy for all creation. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. His blessed family, his companions, and all those who follow his guidance up to the end of the time. All the 
believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophets and messengers as guides. إلى الصراط المستقيم، to the straight path، and through the Holy Quran there are hundreds of places where Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions the stories of different prophets and messengers، not in order for us. To learn the past, the history, but the reason, the stories, most important events took place in the past through the lives of these blessed prophets and messengers sent to guide people in order for us to learn. The stories are lessons for humanity. <coughs> and if we don't learn, they can be repeated. Similar situations, similar conditions, similar type of <coughs> climates can fall upon us if you don't care to what previous <coughs> nations did not take care. <coughs> Some of the prophets and messengers coming to their nations for 300 years, 400 years, 500 years, 700 years, 900 years, and very few people opening the ears of their hearts because they will listen with their physical ears but never open their hearts to accept. My people objecting, resisting the divine orders, divine light, Rahmah sent to them through the prophets and messengers. <coughs> the main obstacle for people throughout the time up to our time is <coughs> arrogance, ego, and they challenging these prophets because they think they are not worth listening. They are maybe same like them or better than them. Yes, maybe in some way they are similar, but they are different. Like stones, Yakut, diamonds, they are stones. But they are not like any stones. The stones you see in the street, nobody. There are stones also. And same is with the position of the prophets and messengers. Yes, Allah sent from the humanity, from mankind, in order for people not to have any barriers, to know them, to listen to them, to understand them, and to show them to their living example, because nature of the angels, nature of the jinn, is different from the nature of mankind. The lifestyle, the needs, completely different. If it was to be sent by angel or by a messenger from angels or from jinn to mankind, it would have been impossible to see the real example of implementations of the divine orders. Because they are completely different. But prophets and messengers, they come in 
with some similarities from the physical <coughs> point of view in order to show us exactly from beginning to the end every step of our lives from the moment we wake up to the moment we finish our day and go to sleep how to live in harmony with the divine orders how to be obedient servant how to follow the divine instructions and guidance and commands for everything in our life we have to follow certain rules <coughs> when we travel when we drive when we fly when we go for treatments we have to listen and follow the guidance of what is prescribed for us from our doctors from our gps for everything we have to have certain yes guidance is to follow but there is no more important instruction and guidance than one which is coming directly from Allah Almighty to give us the real honor and real happiness and real honorable stations for which we have been created to be his obedient servants. But our ego said, be a rebellious servant. Reject object to everything and follow your own ego. The Prophet one day said to companions, there is a friend, one, you listen to him, there is a friend who companions you, when you listen to him, he humiliates you, when you disobey him, he honors you. And companions thinking about who could be that one? Who is that type of person? When you are honoring him, he is dishonoring you. And when you are dishonoring him, he is honoring you. <coughs> what type of friend? What type of companion is that? And Professor Asalim explaining and telling us and warning us from such a friend. It means don't follow such a friend. All the time challenge him. If you want him to raise your station, challenge that one. And that is our nafs. Nafs al amal al -sul. If you listen to your ego, it will take you downhill and destroy all your good deeds and take you to wrong ways and to destruction. If you disobey every disobedience to this ego, to this nafs, it's a station for you of honor, raising you. Every moment you put in one step on your ego, taking you higher and higher. And what is preventing us from being real obedient servants to Allah Almighty is that friend which we give him too much honor, too much attention, too much importance. Because that ego says all the time, me, me, everything for me. I am important. Everyone else not important. But in Islam, the best one among the people are those who are most beneficial to others. And highest stations reach fastest ways through the khidr, through ser serving others. This is the meaning of servanthood. To be servant of Allah, it means serving His creation. Caring for his creation. If you have a big ego, you cannot serve anyone. You want everyone to be your servant. <coughs> and you want to be like a pharaoh. Pharaoh reached to that point when one day he's claiming he is a God himself. And people of Egypt must worship him. And this is what where the ego leads us. Leads us to the position of destruction, being arrogant, being disobedient to Allah Almighty. And this is what happened with the cursed one. The one who worshipped Allah more than anyone else, but in one day he lost everything in one go. Because he said, I'm better than Adam. 
Iblis problem was with his ego. Human beings problem is with their egoistic side. If they follow their spiritual guidance, their souls, their hikmah, their minds, and listening carefully to divine orders and commands of Allah Almighty, immediately you will say, Sami'na wa ta'ana. This is the way of Sahaba. When Prophet ﷺ ordering, when Allah commanding something, Sami'na wa ta'ana. Gufran wa Oh Allah, forgive us. Maybe we not doing enough, good enough. And this is the humbleness. Humbleness is to even when you do something good, don't claim it for yourself. You say, Alhamdulillah, Allah granted me. Without his tawfiq, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Oh believers, if you have anything belonging to you, to your physical body, to your soul, to your mind, to all worldly things surrounding you, then you can be arrogant and egoistic and challenge divine order and do something against teachings of Allah through the Holy Quran and teachings of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu But when you think through this universe, Allah gives us highest order, but at the same time we are the weakest of all the creation. Nothing belongs to us. Everything, countless, countless, countless bounties surrounding us from our physical bodies to unknown worlds and all the surroundings around us, all these ni'mas belong to our Creator, Allah Almighty, including ourselves and our souls. To use this nearness against the one who is giving all this honors throughout his endless generosity in such a perfect way that even you don't have to think about nearness of your being able to stand, to hear, to see, to move, to breathe. All these are taken for granted. To have all this light, this oxygen, all the surroundings of, through universes, all these planets flying in the speed of maybe 10, 100 times of this higher than speed of the airplane, and you are still <coughs> not feeling anything, like nothing is moving. This is miracles, powers of Allah Almighty granting us such a stability, such a quiet position to be everything in order in such a perfect way you don't even have to think about it. If something was to be your property and belonging to you, then be arrogant, be disobedient, then use that against the divine order, then you have some rights to do that. But we don't have anything like somebody giving you generously and instead of saying thank you, you're hurting that person. This is how it is, our position with our Creator. But from His endless mercy, He's letting us, even with doing wrongs, opposing Him, sinning, everything, despite everything, He's still waiting. Ordering angel not to write it straight away. Wait for this seven, maybe He will cool down after half an hour, after one hour, after five hours, ten hours, up to the end of the day. Still giving you opportunity to say, Tawbah. And if you are thinking in one point and saying Tawbah Ya Rabbi and putting your forehead in frustration and says that instead of writing for you a sin, writing for you a good deed. This is the generosity of Allah Almighty. Because He knows our weakness. But when you are returning to Allah, that is most beloved to Allah Almighty. al istiqamah To keep in the straight path to keep the order of Allah Almighty through the Holy Quran and Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is most honoring for us through this life and for eternity. Allah doesn't need us 
to be obedient. Allah doesn't need from us anything. We need everything from Him. And if we are serving others for the sake of Allah, because our service is not benefiting Allah Almighty, even our sinning, not harming at all. If even one person making the sins of all mankind, no harm reaching to Allah. And doing the good deeds of all mankind, not reaching even any benefit for Allah Almighty. Because He doesn't need anything from us. But we need everything from Him. All believers, remember, be humble, be kind, be obedient in order to hold on to that great honor, that great position, to be among this we creation which has nothing and everything created in order for us to be the most honorable in divine presence, even higher than angels. But it depends on us, how we thinking, how we intending, how we acting, what we are aiming. And intention is most important for the believer. Even his intention better than his action. Even you cannot do something, you have good intention, it's already written for you. This is generosity of Allah Almighty. Granting for us, even without still committing whatever we're intending to do good, we are not managing to reach to that point, you are still honored and written the azure, the reward of the world, as you have done that action, even better than action, because certain actions may be that in committing ourselves to do certain things we want to do good, maybe the time coming, maybe we expect from people to appreciate, to thank all this, and the intention that it become very, not very clear, because our intention all the time should be only to please Allah Almighty. May Allah turn for us wisdom, sincerity, clear vision, and hikmah to keep on the right path, to be obedient servants, to be humble servants, and to follow the ways and footsteps of Sayyidina Rasulullah and those who followed his footsteps among the companions, ulama, sulaha, awliya, salihin, and grant us to be followers and lovers and to be with them and to be like them and to raise the flag of iman, faith, and best of manners and characters, whatever we are for other people to be enlightened. Amen, amen. وصل الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا الحمد لله حمد كثيرا والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين حمد رب العالمين والشفيع المؤمنين سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله تعالى كتاب الكريم بعد عبد الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وبارك وحمدت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك في العالمين حمد مجيد اللهم Thank you.